Liberation is a love story, a divine romance between the character, that which you recognize yourself to be at this moment, and God, that which you really are. It is a divine romance. It's about love, not about knowledge. It's about love and increasing exponentially that love. And that love dissolves all structures of illusion. But for this divine love to be possible, certain things have to be in place, certain circumstances. You are small at this moment, you recognize yourself as small, and you recognize God as big. And this has a purpose. So this knowledge of, this theoretical knowledge of I'm God is important, but it can be a hindrance. And usually it becomes one. Because you have to work from where you really stand. And there's a purpose for that. Some seekers imagine that by the strong repetition that I'm God or I'm not the body, that that solves everything. But these mantras, they are there for you to strengthen a firm attitude. So when you're reacting to fears and attachments, you should remember, I am not the body. So I shouldn't be investing in this. I'm God. This is not my real nature. This is illusion. That's what it's for. It's not by the repetition that it happens. It is through love and devotion and surrender. And for these to happen, certain things must be in place. Love can happen only from where you stand towards that which is. No other way. So it's quite easy to embrace the idea that I am God. And that allows for a lot of, a lot of spiritual studies to unfold a lot of time spent in that, but without gaining humility, without reducing the size of the character, because it doesn't matter how big your ego is, it fits under the shade of God. So knowing your divine nature is the destiny and moving from where you are towards humility is the means. So humility is the hallmark of spiritual growth. If it's increasing humility, then it's going in the right direction. I use many times the word God on purpose. These days, it is people prefer the word spirit or universe or divine abstract concepts. They have difficulties with the word God because of what it implies, because of surrender. The ego doesn't want to surrender. He wants to reach the highest because it is a worldly instrument. So I use God a lot because it is there firstly, and because it is important. There's no moving higher in the ladder of consciousness, if not 
through love, devotion, surrender. No moving. Everything else is just apparent moving. Even the theoretical knowledge, if you're diving into it, forgetting about meditation, it starts building new structures that will make more difficult love and surrender. And that distance with God will increase instead of reducing. So the truth may keep you in prison because of lack of maturity. Of course, everybody thinks they have maturity. But understand, that is the destiny. Your present condition is not that. And you work from where you really are. The liberation is about divine love. To live that divine romance. Many of you are born with this urge of being close to God, of loving God, of seeking God through the structures that are possible to you according to the circumstances where you lived. And there's a reason for this. And it is about this divine romance. For love for God to be possible, real love, not conditional love, a lot of cleansing has to happen. For devotion to be possible, a lot of things have to happen. And it needs to increase, to increase so much, so much, that your heart melts melts, bursts in love. It overflows constantly. Liberation is about this divine romance. And the purpose of all of this, that is unreal, of course, is to experience that divine romance, is to live it. And that's what picks up the drop, the droplet of individuality, apparent individuality, and throws it back to the river. Simultaneously to the ocean. And in your experience as a seeker of truth, you will experience God as separate and you will experience guidance as separate. First you will experience as separate until it, you become one with it. Because as long as it is, it's not separate, it's just your mind. 